Okay, this is the uh, TSP lecture on the Christophides approximation algorithm. We'll click on that. Okay, so I've set some of this up for you already. I'll run those first few cells to kind of generate this random instance. Okay, so Christophides starts off exactly like the that uh, kind of minimum spanning tree based to approximation. So first we find this minimum spanning tree. In graph G and the weight that we'll be using in this minimum spanning tree algorithm is based off of the length attribute. Um, after I generate the spanning tree, I can draw it. I'll use the same node positions as in this picture right here. OK, so there's my spanning tree. OK, um, next up is to identify which of these nodes have odd degree. So which nodes touch an odd number of edges? So a lot of these nodes, like these kind of in here, they touch two edges, so we don't count them. We're not interested in them. Um, yeah, I don't see any other degrees that are odd, or sorry, that are even, except for just two. Uh, degree is two, but we do have several odd degree nodes, and you, you'll you'll always have some odd degree nodes because the leaves will always be odd in degree. So this one has odd degree. This one has odd degree, this one has odd degree, this one, this one, and I think this one right here also. So we can write some code that will find them. So I'll create a list called odd degree nodes, and this will be the set of all nodes I of the tree for which the degree of that is. Um, odd. So the way that we can kind of check whether a number is odd or even is based off of this mod operator. Maybe to illustrate that. So if you take, um, let's say, I don't know, four is an even number. So if you do four mod two, this will return zero. What this is saying is if you take Four divided by two, um, it will evenly divide. Um, so the remainder is uh, is zero. So whenever you apply this operator, it always returns kind of what's the remainder after division. So if you take um, let's say seven for example, seven is odd. So if you do seven divided by two, it'll go in three times. And then there will be one, one left over, so this should return one. Yep. Okay. So basically, any time we do um, an odd number mod two, it'll always return one. And any time we plug in an even number mod two, it'll return zero. Okay. So if we do this, um, if it's even this will essentially evaluate to false. So that's how uh, Python will, will treat it. But if I do this odd number mod two, it'll kind of return a value of one, which Python will treat as true. Okay. So we could draw um, our tree. Again, using those same positions. Um, and now I would like to kind of in our picture identify which one of these nodes have odd degree, which I'll do using some colors. So I need to define what are my node colors. Oh, so let's see. Oops. Node, I need to give it a color, and actually, I can give it a number, and 
if I give the nodes different numbers, then this network X function will assign colors to those numbers. So basically, I just want to indicate um, for each one of these nodes if the degree is odd or even. So I can just make sure I assign different numbers to the nodes based off of whether it's odd or even, which I can do using this mod operator. So I will store that value for each node and draw that. Okay. So it seems like it's doing what it's supposed to. Okay. So we've identified the odd degree nodes. So this was the, the second step in Christophides. So we draw a spinning tree, we find the, the nodes that have odd degree. Um, so those are indicated in this picture by yellow. And the number of these yellow nodes is, is always going to be even, it turns out. And what we're going to try to do is try to match up these yellow nodes. Um, so each each yellow node will get a partner, and we're trying to do that at minimum cost. So I mean, these two nodes right here, it would be convenient if we were to match them up because the cost we would have to pay would be just that length of that edge right there, which is relatively small. Uh, but if we were to match up these two yellow nodes, then this node over here still needs to be matched with somebody. Um, and the remaining nodes over here are kind of far away, so you'd have to pay a lot of cost to connect those two yellow nodes. I'm actually not sure. I, I suspect maybe this one will get paired with this one, this one will get paired with that one, and that one will get paired with that one, I'm guessing. Okay, so we're going to kind of essentially solve an optimization problem that will find that minimum cost matching. Um, and it's that minimum cost perfect matching because every node Every one of those yellow nodes is supposed to get matched. OK. So our matching is just going to be, it's going to come from this network X function. Um, and we want a minimum weight max matching or minimum cost matching. But um, at least in the network X version that I was using, they didn't have min weight, but they had max weight. So what we can do is just, solve max weight, but with the essentially the objective coefficients reversed. So I'll need to go in and reverse the sign or change the sign of all of these edge lengths. If that's edge ij, it's negative length. It's just negative of its length. OK, so now instead of doing minimum cost, I can do maximum negative length. And I, I want to find this matching not in G and also not in this tree T, but I want it in the, in the portion of G, the original complete graph that corresponds to the yellow nodes. So I'm actually looking for a matching in a graph that has just those six nodes. So I want the subgraph of G corresponding to those odd degree nodes. And I'm also going to force Network X to find uh, a perfect matching, which the way I can do this here is just to impose that it finds a maximum size matching or maximum cardinality match matching. So it, it finds this matching that has the most possible number of edges. OK, and then I also need to specify that the weights that I'm interested in are the negative length weights. After I get that matching, I will write what it is. So these are the three pairings or three edges that end up getting chosen in our matching. Um, now let's let's draw what are those three edges, which should be connecting those thick uh, yellow edges. I want to draw uh, the subgraph bonding to those matched edges. Uh, 
and I'll keep the positions of those nodes, those six yellow nodes exactly as they are in that picture. Okay. So you'll see it, it is exactly what I predicted that this one got matched with that one, this one got matched with that one, and that's got matched with that one. That was apparently the the cheapest way to pay for those uh, three edges to get matched. Okay, so that's the next step in Christophides. Um, now what we're going to do is take these edges from our matching and also take the edges from our spanning tree and essentially add them together to create one, one graph. Okay, so create a graph called M and it'll be called M because it's a multi-graph. And what I mean by that is it's going to permit um, essentially some parallel edges. So in this graph, or let's say the spanning tree, between any two vertices, there's at most one edge. So either there's no edge, like in this case, or there's one edge, like in this case. I'm actually going to create a multigraph, which will permit me to have actually multiple edges between two given vertices, which is important because these matched edges may have actually already been in my uh, spanning tree. Um, in this particular case, they're not, but generally speaking, it, it could it could happen. Like these two edges, for example, could have been um, part of my or sorry, these two vertices that have an edge between them and our spanning tree could have also been chosen as part of my matching, in which case I would have two edges here. Now, all that to say, that's why we have this multi-graph. Which are the same nodes as either of those other graphs, so which is also the same as range in just node 0, node 1, node 2, node 3, and so on. And then I'll add the edges. And I want the edges from the spanning tree, which would be t dot edges. And I also want the edges from the matching. OK. And then I can print the edges that are now in my multigraph. Maybe I'll also print how many there are. Okay. So you'll see here. Um, these edges now have kind of three parts to them. There's the two nodes that they connect, and then there's kind of like the edge number, uh, like the duplicate number. So because this is a multigraph, um, it's again possible that you have multiple edges between two nodes. And so I think that's what this, this last attribute is I believe recording Kind of what copy of that edge is it? Is it the first copy? Is it the second copy? The third copy? And since we don't have any duplicates, I think that's why these all say zero. Okay. Uh, I guess I could also do in dot edges with the parentheses, and I think it would display that. Yeah. Okay. But you'll see here I have uh, 22 edges. So in a tour, we should have 20 edges. So we had. Uh, 19 edges in our spanning tree plus the three edges in our matching. So in total, we have 22. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> I can draw probably this graph. So let's do index dot draw. I'll draw M and I can use the same positions. So you'll see here it's it's close to a tour, but again, I have two extra edges here. Okay. 
Um, so what I'm going to do in this graph here is I'm going to find an Eulerian cycle. Um, and it turns out this is guaranteed to exist by what I've done up here. So any time that an edge had odd degree, I ended up um, adding another edge to it in this matching. So now all of the edges, or sorry, all of the nodes in M, my multigraph, have even degree. And also this graph is connected because it has that spanning tree that's part of it. And so actually those two properties, having all even degrees and having um, the graph being connected, um, those are the exact conditions that you need for a graph to be Eulerian, or in other words, to admit an Eulerian cycle. That's exactly why Christophides does this. Okay. So now I want an Eulerian cycle. So I can do index dot Eulerian. Well, in their case, they call it circuit. I want an Eulerian circuit of my graph, my multi graph M. And let's start our Eulerian cycle at node zero. And I'll print my Eulerian cycle or my kind of initial tour. And I should also cast that as a list. There we go. Okay. So you'll see it goes 0 to 15, to 19, to 14, to 1, 16, 9, 8, and so on. Um, but you'll see, let's say, for example, this node 8 is repeated. So we stop by 8 here, but then we also stop by 8 later in this cycle. So I need to essentially remove those duplicate vertices and take shortcuts. This is just like what we had done in the two approximation. For my tour at zero, and for every edge in this Eulerian cycle, A is not yet in my tour. And I can print it's the tour I get in the end. And this should have uh, all of the vertices exactly once. And now I can draw it. So first I'll get the edges of the tour. And then I can draw it. Okay, so this should be a tour. I see that some of the edges are crossing, but that's that's fine. Um, so I think what goes on here, I'm guessing this edge crosses. Can't okay goes this way. I'm guessing, and then comes around. Okay, so this should be a, a, a Hamiltonian cycle or a true TSP tour. Uh, maybe if I rerun all of these cells, maybe I'll get an instance where this picture looks a little nicer. OK, so here's another instance. And at least in this case, we don't have any edge crossing, so it's easy to visualize. OK, um, so Christophides doesn't necessarily generate an optimal solution, um, but it's guaranteed that it will always uh, produce a tour that's um, no more than 50% uh, longer than it needs to be. So uh, let's say if the shortest possible tour is 100 miles, then Christophides won't return anything longer than 150 miles. So still, it could be actually pretty far from optimal, but uh, I guess the advantage is that it does come with some guarantee and it's also fast. So all of these steps that I've done here are uh, theoretically uh, fast. 